Who's your daddy? Today, we are going to be using Embark DNA to determine who is his daddy. And also, we'll be talking about the recessive red genes and how they show up in the Embark DNA reports. I'm excited to share with you this little puppy who, if you've been following along Penny and her puppies in our playlist, you've literally seen him from a few minutes after he was born all the way through, and now he's five weeks old. We just received his Embark DNA test that we did recently, and so we'll go over the results in that test, what they reveal, and how they help us confirm 100% sure who's your daddy. So let's dive in now and look at the Embark DNA test for Toffee. So you see here, this is the first page that comes in the Embark report. And there's a couple of things here that we're going to look at right away. First, we see that Toffee is 100% miniature schnauzer. Well, I knew that and uh, I didn't have a question about that, but it's also nice to just have it confirmed. We can also see the date when the report was done. So January 19th, 2023. And we see here genetic stats, predicted adult weight, 16 pounds. Mm, that's not going to be accurate. I am not able to use the Embark DNA reports for my mini and toy schnauzers. And I'll explain why in the next video that I'm creating today. But for right now, let's keep going with the Embark DNA report for Toffee. So next in the report is an overview of what a miniature schnauzer is, what to expect, some fun facts. The next page is about the maternal line and where it's coming from. Then the paternal line for this puppy and where it's coming from. And now we get into the coat color. Frankly, the more important uh, part for me is the health information, but that comes later in the report. So I'll go through the report just like it comes uh, when I receive it. So what we see here is something that we already knew about him and we could tell this just by looking at him. On the E locus, the E locus, he has to have two little E's, meaning he is recessive red. On the K locus, when the little E, when we have two little E's, the K locus is not expressed. But it's useful to understand this KY, little KY, little KY, because if I decided to breed him to a dog who had a capital E, meaning that a capital E is going to enable a dog to have black or chocolate colored hair instead of white cream or red hair. So this little E is going to keep it recessive red on the white to red range. But the, the KY, KY doesn't come into play unless there was a capital E up here, meaning dark colored dog. The next part of the test tells us the intensity loci. And it says here that he has intermediate red pigmentation. So this little puppy, this is an intensity loci linkage test. And now this is often confusing to people because let me show you how to use the Embark DNA. So this is now looking online at the same test, same dog's test, but you go into the trait function. So see right up here where it says traits, click on traits in the online link to your report. And then you see here where it says see details you're going to click on see details. And now you're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom of that page to the show sub loci results. So this is how you find out the sub loci information on an Embark DNA test. So here we see 
the sub loci for the intensity red index. And this is what determines the fact that this puppy is intermediate red. And so you see here, it says this trait summarizes these results for the individual so, sub loci. So these are the individual sub loci that we're looking at now. And so we see red, 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 red. Here we see cream, cream. Then we see red, cream, and cream, cream. And so when you sometimes see a dog having five out of 10 or seven out of 10, what they're counting is the number of reds the number of reds that are showing up. So there's 10 possible. And we see here that Toffee has five out of 10. So if I'm breeding him to a dog who has a red here and a red here, I am going to be able to get puppies that are darker on the red index. Well, let's go back now to his report. So we see here the A locus next. And again, that's not expressed because of the little e, little e. Then we see the D locus. And frankly, all of my dogs have capital D, D. So in other words, they don't create the dilute colors such as blue, charcoal, fawn, silver, or Isabella. Dogs that are that color have the recessive D, D instead of the dominant capital DD. Next, we see the Coco. And again, that has not played out for me with any of my schnauzers. Next, we see the B locus. And this is a very important one for me. And this was the tell to confirm for sure exactly who this puppy's daddy is. So the B locus tells us, will the coloring in the nose and the pads of the feet be black? If so, it's a capital BB. If a puppy has recessive, the lowercase BB here, then they have a brown nose and brown pads. And this also determines whether or not the dog is going to be a white with either a black nose or a chocolate color nose, or if the coat color could be chocolate color. So here we see this puppy has a capital B, which means his nose is going to be black. The pads of his feet are going to be black, but he inherited a lowercase b which makes Bentley his father for sure because Bentley only has two lowercase b's. You get one from mom and one from dad. My other male has two capital b's. So Reddy has two capital b's, meaning he can only produce puppies that have a dominant black nose and pads. But this little boy can now produce puppies if I breed him to a female that has lowercase bb here, a liver female, a chocolate female, I can breed him to Nestle or Godiva or Liberty and he will produce puppies that have the chocolate color. So this is why this is so important to me. All right. I'll skip over some of these next or this next piece here because uh, we really don't have saddle tan in schnauzers. But the next one is also important. So the S loci. And when there is a capital S, that means that the dog will be solid color. So you see here, he is going to be solid color. But you notice that the recessive SP, when a puppy has the lowercase sp, sp, there will be party colored. And so this dog is wonderful for me because he, depending on who I breed him to, can either produce solids or he can produce party colored puppies. 
All right, next trait here, Meryl. I don't have any dogs that have any Meryl in them. I also don't have any dogs, any Schnauzers that have Roan, and I don't have any that have Harlequin. So there are other traits that are revealed in this report. Next is the furnishings. And when we have two capital FF here, that means that this puppy is going to be very well furnished. In other words, we'll have the mustache, the beard, what enables us to create a really pretty teddy bear look. The coat length, we see here likely a long coat. This is a coat that's going to need to be combed and we see that the dog is less shedding. In fact, we say that schnauzers don't shed. And then the dog is not likely to be hairless. We can see here in the report. Additional traits. Um, this dog is not likely to be albino or pass albino. And we can see things related to coat texture. We can also see muzzle length tail length, hind dew claws. These are not so important to me. We can see blue eyes. Does the dog have the ability to pass blue eyes? And in this case, he is not likely to be blue eyed. We can see back muscling. Again, not an important distinction for schnauzers, but it is important for some other. And this is where we, we look here at the body size and this is where, it, for me, it has not worked because schnauzers, many schnauzers and toy schnauzers have been bred down from larger dogs. So the, G, the genetic DNA on this is a little confusing uh, and does not add up to helping us get the exact right sizing for our dogs. All right, other traits here that you see, altitude, appetite, Again, I don't necessarily look at those things, but for DNA reports, they are interesting. Now, this part is usually where I go first. And what we look to see is his health report. And the great news is this little guy, Toffee, is clear for everything. He's clear for the three variants that are often um, problematic in schnauzers. And he is also clear for 231 additional variants. Most little dogs have a, a low ALT score. And so he does have this low ALT. And what that means is that it's just useful to be able to communicate to a vet that his baseline ALT level would be low normal. And so that's not anything at all to be concerned about. But this is great news and worthy of celebration because it confirms what I had hoped, that this little boy has inherited from both his parents who were clear for everything. He is also clear for everything. And then this tells us all the various conditions that were tested and that he is clear for. So these are the three uh, issues that are most common apparently in schnauzers and again we see he does not have those and then look at this list of all the other things that Embark DNA tests for to confirm that he is clear on and you can see this is fantastic. So thrilled about this puppy and this report and why I'm adding him to my breeding program. The next piece here has to do with inbreeding and diversity. And we can see that he has a COI, a coefficient of inbreeding of 24. And that is right around the norm for the Schnauzer breed at this point. And so I will intentionally breed him to a female who has lower COI so that we can help to lower that number. But all in all, this is a very exciting report for this little boy who is doing wonderful things. And I will be talking more about him, his coloring, and the things that will be happening with him. His father was also born this color, this uh, toffee color. And you see here these beautiful red ears well, in some dogs that stays red, but in other dogs, it lightens up. And one of the things I can see about him by pulling his coat back, 
I can see that he is going to lighten up to a more honey color. So the people who were asking about him and wanting to buy him, who were wanting a red dog, I was hesitant to confirm or commit that he would in fact stay red. And that was the right decision to make because he will be more on the honey side than on the red side. I do have other dogs that, and he will be able to produce, if I breed him to the right dogs, he will be able to produce beautiful red colored schnauzer puppies. But I like to be very, very upfront and honest with people about what to expect with their puppies. We literally custom design puppies here based on our waiting list and what people are looking for. If you are interested in an Embark test for your own dog, please use the code below. Embark has invited me to be an affiliate of theirs. And so you can get the best pricing available today by using that code. Please subscribe if you're getting value from my videos. I do have a series of playlists that help people to really hone in on the videos that would be most important to them from my channel. We'll say to be continued and see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.